Hi, I'm Jean Kosar, and I'm a drama teacher in Richmond, BC, and I'm a friend of Kinder Books. And Anna asked me to read a couple of things uh, for you on this uh, Kinder Book website. So um, I thought I would read a couple of poems. The first one I actually know, so I'm not going to read it. I'm going to tell it to you. And uh, sometimes it's fun to learn things by heart, and that's um, something actors do. That's what I teach. I teach drama. And uh, I like the phrase learning something by heart because it means it's, it's in your heart. Uh, this poem is called Jabberwocky, and it's by Lewis Carroll. Twas brillig, and the slithy toes did dire and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mome raths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the claws that bite, the jaws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the manxome foe he sought, till rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, caloo, calay, he chortled in his joy. "'Twas brillig, and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the moanwraths outgrabe. Uh, here's another poem. I don't know this by heart, but maybe I'll learn it by heart. Um, it's a poem by a poet called Walter de la Mer, who was very popular when I was young. And it's called... The listeners. Is there anybody there, said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door? And his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head. And he smote upon the door again a second time. Is anybody there, he said. But no one descended to the traveler. No head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his gray eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came and no one answered. That I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. I, they heard his foot upon the stirrup and the sound of iron on stone and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. 